Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. I'm Benson and I'm here with Ben today. Hey everyone. And we'll be having a quick chat about Redgrass Games' range of paintbrushes. Well, I say range, they have two brushes. Two brushes, in fact, that they claim are the only brushes you'll ever need to own. Bold claims, bold claims. So, what do we think? I mean, Ben asked me to have a word, as I've been using his Redgrass brushes recently while I've been doing content for the channel. I do get through a lot of brushes at home. The kids find them and play with them, the cat likes to chew on them, the amount of times I've left them face down in uh, in pot of water when I've been called away is way too high. It's safe to say I don't look after them well enough. That means I get through a lot. So while I may not know the technicalities of what makes a good brush, I do know what I like, and I do know what works best for me. So here we have the two Red Grass Games brushes in all their splendour. As you can see, they come packaged individually in these protective tubey things. I, I really like these. I, uh, I definitely think they provide a bit of, uh, bit of defence from my cat chewing away at them. Um, probably not so much from the kids with their pesky fingers and thumbs, but they'll definitely be handy for transport as well, which is something I bear in mind because I obviously move between mine and Ben's a lot. If uh, if you guys are transporting your brushes around as well, it might be a big bonus for you there. I also think they, they actually had like a huge level of quality. That's the first thing I noticed when they arrived in the uh, the envelope they came in, that they just... I've got no other brushes that come in this sort of packaging and I just thought it stunk of high quality and a great finish. Yeah, it, it does seem classy, doesn't it? These brushes come in two sizes, one of which is the size 2, that's the bigger version, and the other one is the double zero, uh, double O, I'm, I'm not sure what you'd uh, officially call that. I don't think these sizes are universal, they don't really look the same as other 2s and uh, double zeros I've seen, I mean, I could be wrong. As far as I know, like every single time I see a double zero or a two, it's different in some shape or form. These ones are particularly fat. I think they mentioned that in their little blurb about these brushes that they've got a fine point but a fat body. And I think that these are particularly fat compared to my other two size two. And I guess that means that they hold a lot more paint when you slurp up some paint. The size two was good with the contrast that I use it with uh, recently. Uh, it did hold a lot of paint on that brush there, which was uh, very handy at the time. In either case, what both of the brushes do have in common is a fantastic tip. Um, I think that's why the brushes are so versatile, really. The sharp tip letting you paint with much more precision than a brush of that size would normally allow. Like, you wouldn't catch me doing details with a size 2 normally, but with this one, I don't shy away from it. I think um, this is a bit unfair for everybody watching the video that these brushes are actually now like six months, if not older, so I've... I've used these a lot and they came with an even sharper tip to begin with. In fact, probably the sharpest tip I'd seen. They were certainly comparable, but I think better than the Rosemary & Co. ones I'm used to, which have a phenomenal tip. Yeah, I have heard they're meant to be uh, good brushes, though. Actually, that is one type of brush I've not really used much of. To be fair, though, despite all the spiel, I'm not sure you could only buy two brushes for all your needs. I mean, realistically, I don't want to mix my paint with these brushes at, what, 15 euros, something like that each? Yeah, 15 euros for the biggest one and 13 euros for the small one on their site, RRP, and that's what they sell at, so I guess actual price too. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to use that to be mixing up multiple colours, or um, certainly you wouldn't want to use them for dry brushing or stippling or anything like that. Though, to be fair, as I mentioned earlier, I have used a size 2 in a few contrast videos, and I can say it does work quite well as a wash brush, so you probably wouldn't need a separate wash brush at all. And that does a job remarkably well because it holds so much paint on it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm, I totally agree. I'm actually surprised how much these do get done. I think when I first got hold of these brushes, I sort of mocked that they tried to make out you could do everything with these two brushes. But having used them for six months, you can do 90 seven ninety eight percent of what you do i guess that hasn't got quite the ring to it as saying <laughs> you only need two brushes so maybe their site should be like for 98.7 percent of your needs but other than that i mean they do everything i just have sort of a, a 10 cents brush for just mixing paints and not caring and then i have sort of my stippling dry brush brush and then i have a ridiculously small tip whereas these are really fine, the tip's a great point and you can get precision on it, but it, because it's quite fat, sometimes I'm painting like the inside of a, a guy's eyes and he's wearing a mask or a visor and, and just the fatness is going to catch on the, the small, the, I mean a lot of the models are painted a teeny tiny so I'm going to catch them just on the width of the tip being bigger than the visor I'm trying to paint inside. 
yeah, I've, I've personally not had any trouble with the um, the tips. I find them very, very nice tips, particularly on the small one. For doing eyes and things, it's been fine, but Ben does tend to paint more sort of board game miniatures than me, who obviously I'm more into my Warhammer and such like. So his models are a smaller scale quite often. As for extended use, how well these are going to last? I mean, since I started using them, since Ben uh, asked me to paint a few things with them, I have seen no degradation at all. They literally held their tip perfectly. Like they look as good as they ever did when I uh, when I took care of them. Yeah, I think they're not. They're holding up well to say they are not in the condition they came in originally, and that I don't think is their fault. You guys are familiar with the channel. I paint incredibly fast. I know. I, I mean, you've watched me paint. I don't take that much care with my strokes, and I don't wash them or clean them properly. Ever. I just rinse them in water so I think if you treat your brushes better they will last a lot longer but for me I'm still hitting eyeballs exactly where I want to and uh, the only fault to any of the eyes I do is my own stability it's not <laughs> not the tip of these brushes so they're doing they're doing well there I think the only the only thing I'd add on anything Benson said is I just really like the color it's red and black it goes with the channel I've never seen any of the brushes that come in red and black I, in fact all my brushes are either black or white and then cheap ones are clear so if you like red and black you've got that going for you i'm all about trying to make my desk look cool recently so having nice brushes looks great i think that's everything yeah i mean it harks back to what we were saying about the tubes they actually come in the the color slightly metallic um red on it and the obviously shiny black at the end it just makes it look that little bit classier than you know your average as you say few dollar brush yeah i think they look ex they are expensive and they look expensive but they're good for their money so far i mean we'll keep you posted and you'll see if i change brushes on the channel and move to anything else anyway thank you all ever so much for watching and we'll see you again soon so here we have the two red grass game bush brush you what mate <laughs> The two Redgrass Games brushes in all their splint. Ah, fuck it. <laughs>